thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. Maybe for the next uh, two months or three months, we'll be talking about the watchmen. Uh, I'm referring to significant functionaries in the agenda of God that are lacking in our generation. And we need to continue this study until God can find among us such men with which he will replenish the ranks of watchmen in the territory and in our families. Turn your Bible quickly to the book of Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2. The last lecture I had with you on this subject, we spoke about the first category of watchmen, which are watchmen that um, God reveals things about the activities of the devil. We saw that there were three scopes of watches that God is expecting us to keep. And the first scope of watches is to watch and know what the enemy is doing. Second scope of watches, of watchmen or watches, is to watch what angels are doing. And finally, the third scope of watches is to watch what God is doing. I think I need to define some terminologies to make it easy for us to comprehend. If I succeed in doing my definition, then I will show you the intricacies of what it takes to watch the move of God. For every category of watches and watchmen, I will have to give you an elaborate explanation so that you can identify yourself such, uh, just in case the visitations of God that are coming around your life is in a certain texture. You can understand the kind of personality that you are and the kind of watches that God has raised you to watch. Hallelujah. It's uh, a class that is supposed to promote uh, spiritual intelligence so that every one of us can learn how to take uh, responsibility. The rate of tragedies and the number of tragedies that we have in this time is suggestive of the fact that there is a leak among the special servants of God uh, that keep the watches. So we want to do this teaching so that all the people that listen to our voice worldwide can snap into profitable, strategic kingdom action in Jesus' mighty name. So I think I need to define a few terminologies, and the first of which will be what exactly is a watch? What is a watch? Because the activity of watchmen, the reason for which God sets up watchmen is so that they can keep the watches. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1, the prophet is speaking and he said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Now, there were two things he said he would do here. He would stand upon his watch. Secondly, he would set himself upon his tower. Hallelujah. This terminology, keeping the watches or the concept of watching is a military terminology. If you walk into the police station, you will find a place called the sentry post. Um, Pastor Jaffet, if I am wrong, you can put me in perspective. Uh, he's a police officer. So the first thing you'll find when you walk into the police station, you just walk into the gate, you'll find a sentry post. Even though we have modernized sentry posts right now because of the nature of the kind of buildings that we build, but in those days, uh, kings dwelt in castles. 
And castles were constructed with security consciousness. You see, a post. See, in a castle, you see a place like this, like this, like this. And then this place is a post where a soldier will stand and watch. And because you are a human being, you cannot watch what is behind you. So there are sentry posts that are built on the rooftop of the king's house. And each window for the sentry post is supposed to be a place where a watchman will stand. And because you are a human being, you cannot watch for 24 hours. There is an allocated time of watch that is prescribed for you in carrying out your duty. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Yeah. Sometimes your calling will determine when you watch. And, <laughs> amen. I, I think I need to speak from the practical perspective. How many of you are here when you sleep in the night by 2 a.m., 1 a.m., you receive an attack? Please, don't be ashamed. The way you raise your hand like this, it means you are even afraid of the word attack. Let's try it again. All right. So the reason why you were attacked by 2 a.m., sometimes the devil, God even allows the devil to help you know your watch. That time you were attacked was the time for your watch. You were supposed to be standing at that time. If you notice your, your string and series of attacks, it will give you an idea of when you should be watching. And there's a prescription for watching for every single believer because we form the body of priesthood that will provide earthly permission for heavenly interference. If God is going to break through the ranks and intervene in human affairs, he will need a watchman that is diligent to carry out his assignment. Are you still with me? So there were sentry posts that were built for watch people, watch functionaries, to watch the area to see if there is any enemy attack or any threat whatsoever approaching the castle. So it is in keeping with this ancient culture of watching that the scripture uses this word and this word is used as a register in that context. Are you still with me? So we keep watches. We keep watches. And the idea of keeping watches is if you check the protocol in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1, you will see what is meant in practicality by keeping a watch. When we talk about you keeping a watch, we are not saying you are rising up in the night to pray your prayer point. No. You are rising up in the night to pray God's prayer point. He said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon my tower, upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say to me. You see, you are watching so that you can take up a prayer engagement that God will give you. A watchman is not set up to pray his own prayers. A watchman is set up to pray God's prayers. So when you report for duty as a sentry post, as a centurion, standing in the window of your watch to provide earthly permission for heavenly interference, you are not going there with a, a, a computer load of prayer points. The same the way we do as believers today. The pastor will say, write your prayer points down. <laughs> That's good. Hallelujah. But it's long since I remember that I prayed my prayer points. It's, it's more than almost 20 years. What I do now is I keep watches. And the Lord gives me what to pray about. Sometimes it is you he tells me to pray about. And uh, because it's a, a, a labor unto the Lord, I will not come and tell you, <laughs> I prayed for you today. If you are still doing that, you are a baby looking for attention. But watches are kept by people that are so secure in God that they can do things secretly with God without advertising it in the public. So the guy says, I'm going to stand upon my watch and I will hear what he will say to me. So the reason why he's speaking in tongues in the night is so that he can be still enough to pick up the emphasis that God will put upon his spirit. 
Hallelujah. Is it bad to pray your prayer points? It's not bad, but this is another level. And the reason why this level exists is not for your prayer points. You can pray your prayer points on the road. Pray it some other time. But when you wake up to keep your watch as a centurion, you are waking to hear what? Oh my God, you guys are not here. You are waiting to do what? To hear what he will say to you. That's not all you wait to hear during your watch. There are also times where the kingdom of darkness will come and quiz you and ask you questions. How many of you have been tempted before? Have you been tempted? Okay, some of you have never been tempted. You've been living on an island of grace and Satan is not within your reach. Situations will quiz you, will ask you questions. Circumstances will test you to ask you questions. Anytime you see a perplexity around your life, it is Satan using situations to ask you questions. And you need to know how to answer. Part of what you will get in your watches are the accurate answers to give to situations, to give to circumstances, when Satan wants to pass through situations to ask you questions. So there are two things we receive when we keep our watches. The first thing that we receive is what? What the Lord will say to you. And then secondly, you receive what? An answer to respond when you are reproved. It means that watchmen have answers. A modicum of answers are located to watchmen because it is that the practice of keeping the watches makes you accessible to divine answers. When you see a man's life and it's as if he has answers for all the challenges that bedevil other people, his life looks simple, his life looks easy. You will want to live his life. Like someone came to me and said, I like your life. <laughs> Only my wife <laughs> will counsel you on that. I assure you, 90% of you in this hall cannot live my life. But the reason why it looks easy is because God provides answers. Where is Sister Fethi Igbudu? She sent me a text message. Where, where is she? She sent me a text message and said, you make pastoring look easy. You make ministry look good. <laughs> if you are not called, don't join us. It's a life of peril. And if you don't have answers, you are like someone wandering in the, in the wilderness. When you keep your watches, the God of answers meets with you and gives you wisdom on how to tackle the questions that the challenges of life will present your way on a daily basis. When you keep your watches, God will share with you the burden that is sustained upon his heart. So you begin to prosecute prayer, not on the level of your need, but on the level of God's need. And when you do that, it means you become a valuable strategic personnel in the implementation of the plan of God in your generation. And so when the beast comes to kill, God will go extra length to ensure you are secure because he needs you to be standing upon your high tower to access what is upon his heart. He needs you to create legitimacy for his intervention. Oh my, you are not with me. Okay, because you are not with me, um, let's try to go to the book of Exodus chapter 14. And I will show you how a watch, how a watch gives God the advantage. In Exodus chapter 14 from verse 21 to 24. Please help me tell your neighbor, I will stand upon my watch. I will set me upon my tower. This is the call that the Lord is making available to us during the course of this year. We want to stand upon our watch. Hallelujah. We want to stand on our high tower. Hallelujah. God wants you to participate in that which he wants to do. And he has so many answers to give you. 
answers to the challenges of life. You know, when you begin to interface with God intimately, then you begin to know God. From my own experience of working with God, I can tell you a few things about God. Number one, God does not talk much. Does he talk to you much? Okay. Doesn't talk much. That's how he is. But he answers much. That means if you pray, if you ask much, he will answer you much. But in terms of talking, God is an introvert. He doesn't talk much. Are you here? So if you want to hear him answer you, what will you do? Stand upon your watch and set you upon your high tower. Sometimes the attacks that God allows to come into your life is suggestive of your watch hours. You need to understand and become conscious of the science of attacks around your life. Let's try again. How many of you in the night, you sense uh, attacks? Something will. The one that holds like this. Then you say. <laughs> Let's try again. All right. It's not necessarily, it's of the devil. But it's not altogether bad. What it means is at that time, you were supposed to be watching. So if you check when that thing came to hold you on the neck on Wednesday, on Friday, it, you might find out it is the same time. I'm trying to teach you to understand your own unique watches. Oh my Jesus. This is my class is dull. I want to save you. I want to save you from the grip to release you into liberty. But you need to stay with me. Your attacks has a science around it because it is occasioned by an intelligent entity. The reason why the entity had access to you in the first place is because you became vulnerable. Your defense system was withdrawn at a time, at a certain time. And that time that your defense system was withdrawn is suggestive of the time that you were supposed to be. What? So those of you that lifted your hands that receive visitations from the enemy, if you sleep in the afternoon, do you receive those visitations? Can somebody help me quickly? <laughs> you have realized that when you sleep in the afternoon, you sleep well. Oh, most of you are not good students of the spiritual indices of your life. You sleep in the afternoon, there's no crisis. But when you sleep in the night, there's a problem. The, what, what the situation is suggesting to you is that you were supposed to be keeping your watch within that bracket. For some people, when you finish doing two hours and you go back to sleep, the attack won't come anymore. For some others, you finish 4, 4, 4 a.m., you go back to sleep, the attack will come again. It means your watch has been extended from 12 midnight. Keep on going. Oh, you don't? Uh, you see, I, I, I came to give you liberty, but it looks funny. Sometimes you need the enemy's help to help you keep the watches. And God is, is laudable. He will allow the enemy to try you so that you can enter into the full shape of your watchman mode. May the Lord give you understanding in the name of Jesus. Try it for two hours. Go back to sleep. If the attack comes, increase it for three hours. You will find when sleeping will be convenient and when watching is prescribed. And you will know your own watch scale. Every watchman has his own watch scale. And if you fulfill the demands of your watch scale, when death comes into the land, it's not coming for you. Are you with me? Mm, I've learned it 18 or 2 working with God. And I have liberty now, this year, liberty to share strange things with you that I got from the table of working with God. So you need to find your own scope of watching. Sometimes part of what unveils it is the attack profile that Satan makes available in the corridor of your life. You need to, you will use that as a barometer to know how many hours you are expected to be watching. Sometimes God comes expressly 
and says to you, if you want to meet me from henceforth, meet me in the night. That means he had given you a prescription of your watches. If you begin to practicalize it, you will know how many hours in the night God is expecting you to be watching. And the guarantee is that when you begin to conduct your watching, you will hear what he will say to you. That's number one. And he will also give you answers to the questions that life will ask you in the daytime. So there are two guarantees that you can extract from your watching. In the book of Exodus chapter 14, beginning from verse 21, the Bible says, And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and God made the sea dry, dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Verse 24. And it came to pass, please listen to me. It came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians to the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. Excuse me. It was not all night God was looking. The moment they activated the watch, God could be involved in their struggle. The moment they activated the watch, God could be factored in their situation. If you know how critical, as omnipotent as God is, all right, you will need to invite him into your space in order for his sovereignty to be felt. The moment it was the watch, God became involved in the struggle. And he began to trouble the Egyptians. Just in case your own Egyptians have been having a good time, it means you have violated a principle that would have brought down the power of God to engage combat within your space if you watch. So the question this evening is, what is the state of your Egyptians? If they are not receiving trouble, it means you are not keeping your watches. If Satan in your family is so strong like an arm warrior, it means you guys have forgotten the way of the watchman. I will stand. That's a commitment that the prophet is making. What was his commitment? I will stand Upon my watch, I pray tonight that you will come to that point in your life where you make a commitment. If, you know, by the time you begin to walk with God and so much responsibility is laid upon you, you can't even say you will not watch. Someone like me, can't, I, I'm, no, I'm sentenced to a life of watching. But I pray someone else in the congregation will say, I will stand upon my watch. We don't consider the devil's presence in the environment. What we do is that we make a commitment to stand upon our watch. That's when you know how powerful God is. The enemy will boast as long as there's no watchman in the territory. But be, the moment you activate the morning watches, the Lord will trouble the Egyptians. Please help me tell your neighbor, when will you make a decision? When will you take the stand about your watching life? Standing upon your watch and mounting your tower is not all there is about the ways of watchmen. When you enlist to become a watchman, there are so many responsibilities that you have accepted to begin to shoulder. Are you with me? You are not with me. I need to give you a little insight because I need to tell you about the metaphors, the metaphors of some metaphors in the kingdom. 
that watchmen will inter interface with. That's where I'm going. When I finish that, then I will tell you about the watchmen that watch the move of God. Are you there? All right. So, as a watchman, the first thing you watch out for is to hear what the Lord will what? Say to you. Second thing you watch out for is to hear what answers the Lord will give you to circumstances, to situations, to challenges, to people, to demons. What answers? That's the place where wisdom, condensed wisdom, saturates your heart. And suddenly, you have answers. Right? The third thing that you will need to do as a watchman is to interpret the signs. Did you hear what I just said? To do what? To interpret what? The sign. Whenever there's an activity in the realm of the spirit, it litters the physical realm and the spiritual realm with signs. And a good watchman should be able to interpret the signs. Eh, if God moves, he litters the realm with signs. How many of you are still in keeping with the book of Acts chapter 2, notice before the Holy Ghost fell, the Bible reveals that there was a rushing mighty wind. Before God does anything, he makes a sign first. And watchmen are supposed to be trained. The sign can be physical or spiritual. Do you still remember Elijah? When he was waiting upon the Lord on the mountaintop, he was asking his servant to go check the sky for what? For signs. It, 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 every watchman must be trained to be able to interpret signs. Because many times, I hope you know God is spirit. You are not aware of that. For many of us, we think God is flesh and bone. And he speaks like a man. God is spirit. And because he's spirit, sometimes his communication is in the form of signs. He opens your eyes to be able to interpret signs in the natural. Signs in the supernatural. Signs in heaven and signs in the spirit realm. What's the difference between heaven and the spirit realm? Because there are some times where some signs appear in heaven. I'll show you the difference between heaven and the spirit realm. And signs can be littered all across. And as a watchman, you must be skilled in the interpretation of signs. Psalm 74, verse 9, quickly, before I show you the object of a few signs, that from this day, no, be no longer ignorant of those signs. Because when you begin to pray, you begin to seek God, you begin to talk to God, you begin to cry out, you begin to fast, you begin to keep food aside, you go dry, you only take water. God litters his communication to you in physical and spiritual sign. And a good watchman must be able to read the signs. Now, this was an unfortunate situation that happened to Israel it is recorded in the book of Psalm 74, verse 9. What was their testimony? It said, we see not our, what? Signs. That's number one. That means if God wants to communicate sometimes, he unveils signs. He said, there is no more any prophet. Sometimes if God wants to communicate, he raises a prophet that will communicate his mind. Neither is there any among us that know it how long. That's an ancient. An ancient has seen it before. So when he sees the situation reoccur again, he can tell you that based on my experience, this is what we are to expect. So there are three categories of, of things here. The first one is the sign. Second one is the prophet. And the third is the ancient. I don't have time now. Maybe during the course of the conference, we can isolate these matters and deal with them thoroughly. But my concern for introducing this scripture is to point you to science. Every true watchman is supposed to know how to interpret science. 
How many of you have ever seen a signboard before? You've seen a signboard? What is the job of a signboard? Gives direction. So a, a signboard points to something other than itself. A signboard is not self-centered. A signboard is not self-seeking. It's not leading you to itself. It is pointing to something, hoping to give you direction. That's how signs are. Signs do not lead you to themselves, but signs are pointing to other things. The ability to read signs and know what it is pointing to is critical for a watchman. Let me give you a few signs. So when you pray and fast, read these things. I'll give you physical ones first. And I will, I will not give you spiritual ones because you will, know, you will know those ones. I will explain them so that if you have been having experiences like this, you will know they are signs and you will take them seriously. Is that clear? First physical sign to watch out for when you begin to seek the face of God is what we call bets. Bets. B-I-R-T-H-S. A bet is a sign. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 11 and 14. Chief Donald says, how many children do you have? I have one child. Every child comes to point to something. Are you aware of that? Do you know what your daughter is pointing to? You have not read it. <laughs> uh, uh, you pray for many hours, but you don't read signs. It means you are avoiding spiritual intelligence. Pastor Tony, how many children do you have? You have three. Do you know what each one is pointing to? You know? All right, arm him with a microphone. Oh, you don't know that you, you, you existed as a seed of eternity. Before you were sent into time. Well, I know you, you don't know that. You just think you, your mother got excited. Your parents got excited. That's why you're here. How I many of you have read the book of Jeremiah chapter 1? He said, before I formed thee in the womb, I knew you. And before thou camest forth, you existed as a seed of eternity. Before you were formed in the womb, you existed before God. Before thou camest forth, I sanctified and ordained you as a prophet to the nation. Even in that immaterial form, he was assigned to an agenda. That agenda was, was within the bracket of time, even though eternity doesn't recognize time. You are not with me. If at any point in time I'm speaking over your head, just do like this, I will stop. If I see any hand like this, then I'll just stop. And then we'll just start singing. Oh, sing, oh, sing, oh. Pray. At least everybody understands singing. Praise the Lord. Oh, sing, oh, sing, oh. Where's my keyboard, man? Let's sing this song. They don't understand, so let's start the singing. Oh, sing, oh, sing, oh. Praise the Oh! You have not read the signs. You existed as a seed of eternity before you were formed in your mother's womb. The time you came forth, you would have come forth in the stone age. You have come forth in the time of Abraham. But it was now you came. Why? Every, if you check prophetic children, every child that was born, whose destiny was adequately articulated, the prophets around them were able to read the signs, what they were pointing to. Every child is pointing to something. This is not my lecture for the night. Too. I need to take you into a series of lectures to show you how to read the move of God. That's my body for this night. How to read the move of God. The Lord came to me and said, you've been trying, oh, you've been trying in this your teaching. But now let me teach you what to teach. It came in December. I need to, you are trying, you are trying hard. 
But I need to upgrade you. I need to upgrade you. I need to upgrade you so that you can help my people. Chief Don has, doesn't know the meaning of her daughter, what her daughter is wanting. To. I have three children. I have three children. Joshua. Esther. Deborah. These are three seasons of my life. Marked by three children. You don't believe me, so let me be showing you from the Bible. But well, first, we have to sing. Oh, sing, go oh, sing. Praise the, praise the Lord. Oh, sing, go oh, sing. Everybody understand this song? Praise, praise his holy name. Oh, sing, oh, sing, oh, praise the Lord. The scripture I've been avoiding, I can't avoid it again. That's the problem. All right, let's go. I've so this is what we'll teach this night. Tomorrow I will now start my today's lecture. Isaiah chapter 8. Moreover, the Lord said unto me, Take thee a great roll and write in it with a man's pen concerning Mahashalal Hashbaz. And I took unto me faithful witnesses to record Uriah the priest and Zachariah the son of Jebrekiah. And I went unto the prophetess and she conceived and bare a son. Then said the Lord to me, call his name Mahashalal Hasbaz. Now the name came before the guy was conceived. He got the guys to record that he has received an inspiration before the conception took place. Are you still with me? When the conception now took place and the prophetess gave birth, he said, assign that name that I gave you. Then he will interpret. He said, before, before the child shall have knowledge to cry, my father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. So the child was raised up as to give, to point to a certain political event that will take place. So we need to read the child to know when that political event will take place. The king of Assyria is going to invade and the king will invade when the child begins to develop auditory faculties to be able to say, my father. So it, are you there? So that child is a time clock pointing to a significant event that will change the state of the nation. Every child points to something. So my question to you, do you know what you, point, you, have, you pointed to? What God released you to be pointed? I know you don't know that. A lot of us want to do our spiritual life haphazardly and you want, Satan is very intelligent. You can't discomfit him with gaps in your, your knowledge. He will bamboozle you and make you look foolish. The watchman watches for bets. For before the child shall have knowledge to cry, my father, my mother, the child is pointing to something. And he shall be called Jesus. Why? Because he shall save his people from their sins. It's pointing to salvation. So the ultimate purpose of his manifestation was his death. The most critical thing about his existence was not his miracles, but it was the high place of his life was his death. If you don't know what you are pointing to, when the high place of the, his actualization comes, demons will colonize you. And because you have no knowledge of why you came, you are likely to compromise. And that's the essence of your human existence. Can 
Can I speak to you? All right. My first son, Joshua. There was a pattern, a pattern of darkness that was in my family. I prayed about it. It didn't stop. It multiplied. I fasted. I called upon the name of the Lord. It yet increased. Then I said, okay, I know the meaning of this now. It means I need to go deeper. Huh? If you are going to Boko and your fuel finishes at Wanune, the car has not spoiled. What you need is more fuel. Have you been praying about a matter and it has not worked? You know what? You need to add spices, add fasting, add sacrifice. Because what you are doing cannot take you to where you want to go. The foil has finished. The Lord give you understanding. So there was this challenge in the family. The specific challenges we, we, we held. And it was not just in our nuclear family, it was in the entire extended family. I labored in fasting for 200 and something days, and God had mercy on me and showed me. And he said, in the day that this child is born, I will begin to deliver your people. I mean, the omnipotent God was saying that his deliverance is according to a certain calendar. And the child, this child, will be a pointer to the season of that deliverance. Why did the omnipotent God not just come and break the yoke? I've been standing. I've been praying. Ah, you don't know the protocol of heaven. So I waited. When a male child is born in the family, I go and check out to see if this is the one I saw in my vision. I checked five male children. I became frustrated. I stopped checking. Until my wife became pregnant. I went to the hospital in the night because labor came on her intensely in the night. And my mom, being a midwife, was with us. She was able to trace it. I went there and I prayed all the prayer in my spirit. I prayed it till 4 a.m. Miyako Kari Ameni. Laiko Feli Kapole Masu Kamanta Babo. By 4 a.m., I was expecting a cry of a child. 4 a.m., what happened? My wife strode out. I came on Cory sick. What you are walking? She came and gave me a bench that I should sleep, that I should sleep on it. So by 6 a.m., brethren came and said, Pastor, it's okay, go and sleep. And I went home, and the sleep came deep. Seven o'clock, they entered my room and woke up. They said, the child has come. Jesus, I woke up with headache. They, bungled. they didn't even ask me if I was okay. Took me to the hospital. And once I raised the child like this, it was the vision I saw in Kano. Because I was raising the man-child. It was the child. So I knew that the time for the deliverance of my family had come. My son Joshua was a pointer to the end of our captivity as a family. That was when I began to speak and curse the altar angrily. Don't wake up and go to the shrine of your village and say, I come in the name of Jesus. You will live there paralyzed. <laughs> Nobody sent you. May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> That's how somebody heard a message and took off and went to a shrine. He he couldn't speak again. As he lifted up his hand, he, 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 he became still like, like this. That's how they uh, brought him. They brought him like this. <laughs> May the Lord give you understanding. I began to speak. Demand the release of the captives. And a lot of turbulence took place. That boy was a pointer to emancipation. I was in public service for many years. And for five years, my promotions were withheld. Reasons withheld also. I will not tell you why. It was because of my stand for Jesus. I was given a promise by one of our managers that you will never be promoted. And he, he kept his word for five years. Then my daughter came. My daughter was a sign 
that the days of my promotion had come. After her, her coming, the executive of my office visited here. I received him. He asked me some questions. I answered. Took him around. He said he had the expanded arm here. I said, oh my God. We have it. This is a food basket. That demons did not affect everything in the land. They left yam. They left the yam. Hallelujah. I said he was too dressed. I should put on a T-shirt. Let's go out. Let him look like a normal man. And all of them would. I gave them fresh orange juice. Aye. Jesus. At the end of the treat, I didn't know that I impressed the man. He went back to Abuja and then called the man that said they would never promote me again. Asked him to bring my fire. Son that have not been promoted for five years. He said, promote that man. Backdate it for four years. That means I became due for promotion the next year. The man that said he would not promote me, his signature is, well, is on two of my promotion letters. Now, they, no, no, wait, wait. The question is, when he was signing, where, where was he facing? Was he like this? <laughs> my second daughter was pointing to a fact where even my enemies must be forced to work for me. That's the message of that day. It's, it's enshrined in my books. Number three, my wife took in and I went to preach in a crusade and the demons came to invade her. They attacked her and she lost the baby. I went to God and said, hey, what happened? You know what he told me? I know you not believe. He said, it's not time for you to have a child. It's okay. Then when she now conceived for her daughter, are you with me? That was when God was asking me to resign from ministry and become a full missionary. So that my daughter is pointing to the missionary age of an apostle. Every child, may the Lord give you grace. See, don't just give birth and say, hey, I don't born. <laughs> no, go on labor for God to give you the grace to read the sign. Ah, okay. So bets are signs. Bets are signs. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 11 and verse 14. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 11 and 14. Please, technical people, let's go. Isaiah 7, 11 and 14. Acts D, a sign of the Lord. Thy God asked it either in the depth or in the height above. 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. So bets are signs. Is that clear? All right. Second signs that a watchman must read. This one is sorrowful, but you must read it. Deaths are also signs. Unfortunately. Deaths are signs. One, Psalms 136. Are you there? Psalms 136. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord of lords for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders. For his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters. For his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights. For his mercy endureth forever. To the sun to rule by day. For his mercy endureth forever. The stars, the moon and stars to rule by night. For his mercy endureth forever. To him that smote. Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercies endured forever. Underline that. And brought out Israel from among them, for his mercies endured forever. With a strong hand and with a, a stretched out arm, for his mercy endured forever. To him which divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy endured forever. And made Israel to pass through. The midst of it, for his mercy endureth forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and the host, and his host 
in the Red Sea. The death of Pharaoh, what's the sign there? It was a proof that his mercy endured forever. They, hallelujah. Some people's death is occasioned by the enduring mercy of God. Every death is a sign that watchmen must read. You must know why. Oh, you are not with me. You are sad now. May the Lord give you understanding. You must what? Know why. It's a sign. It's pointing to something. Some deaths are signs of liberation. Like that of Pharaoh. It was an act of mercy. It was a proof that God's mercy does what? Endures forever. Some deaths are indications of the fact that the family is at war and that the darkness in the family has been left untouched. It's a call for the warriors to swing into action. A watchman must be able to read deaths, must be able to read deaths, must be able to read patterns. John chapter 5 from verse 1 to 4. Patterns. Patterns. Do you have patterns in your life? Are there patterns in your family? Are there patterns in Nigeria? Are there patterns in Benue State? You must be able to read patterns. Hallelujah. For instance, in Nigeria, where we recycle leaders, if a leader wants his campaigning, what you need, if he has ruled before, go and check how he ruled before. That's what he's coming to do again. Are you with you? Because the man is not a new creation. He's a, he's a man. You know. May the Lord give you understanding. We must read patterns. John chapter 5, verse number 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Beth Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk of blind, half withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Verse 4 is my emphasis. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. An angel went down. That's a pattern. A watchman must be able to study patterns. The science of being a competent watchman is inclusive of your ability to interpret patterns. Suddenly, after three years, one person dies. And then another three years, two people now die in an accident. Ah! After three years again, there's another barrier. There is a science. It is, it, is, it is indicative of the fact that a causative agent is an intelligence. It keeps time. It keeps schedule. It understands the cycle. So that is supposed to be a red flag that will launch a watchman into the searches of the deep. Have you read the scripture that says, deep, call it. Unto deep. If you want to know secrets, mysteries, hidden things, you will need to go into deep places. May the Lord give you grace to dive into deep places. When you get to deep places, you will now discover that even the kingdom of God operates by mysteries. So if you are operating in the shallow place, <laughs> the real business, the real transaction that is taking place in the kingdom of God, you will never know. You'll just be a victim of mysteries being administered. I want to be where seals break, where things that were concealed will be brought to light. He said the things... Is, it, 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 it. I, what's that scripture again? There is a path which no foul know it, which the vulture's eyes have not seen. The lion's webs have not trodden it, not a fierce lion's passed by it. 
He put forth his hands upon the rocks. He overturned the mountains by the roots. He cutted out rivers among the rocks, and his eyes see it. Every precious thing, he binded the floors from overflowing, and the thing that is hidden, bring it forth to light. The entire spirit realm operates a protocol of secrecy. What gives us the advantage? Because anytime you see the devil operating and he looks strange to you, it means there is a mystery involved, there's a secret involved. What gives us the advantage is that the Spirit of God happens to be stronger than Google in searching. Huh? For the Bible says that the Spirit of God searcheth all things. That means there is nothing hidden from the sight of the Spirit of God. So if I begin to see a pattern that is not consistent with the promises of God, it behoves of me to launch a search. And there is no discrimination in what the Spirit of God can search out. The Bible says that the Spirit of God searches all things. Yea, even the deep things of God. That means the, what is most difficult to search are the deep things of God. He can search every other thing. He can search your lineage. He can search your bloodline. He can search your family. He can search your ancestors. He can search your teachers. He can search your uncles. He can search the government. He can search your nation. He can search Satan. And he can even search the deep things of God. So, every watchman is supposed to be able to understand the meaning for, of patterns. The meaning of patterns. In every month of August, all the women that are pregnant in your family will miscarry. So they need to program their conception outside of August. Because if the conception is two months and below in August, you can be as sure as a mathematical equation that the person is going to lose the pregnancy. There is a mystery at work because the pattern is consistent and intelligence is behind it, you will need to launch a search by the Spirit of God. For He searches all things. Even the deep things of God. I'm provoking you to wake up from your slumber. We need to go and read the numbers and check the signs so that you will know if there's a traitor in the camp. You need to retrieve your weapon. It is God that teaches his people how to war and our fingers to fight. We are going to do a three-month study on spiritual warfare. You are, we, we have been relaxing. It's time for us to be trained on how to fight. Oh, we were traveling and my wife said, let no evil meet you on the way. I didn't answer that prayer. You know why? The evil on the way should be afraid of us. I, I, it is the evil that should be afraid. If he knows what is coming, he won't come out today. <laughs> it's time for us to become warriors in the spirit. And we're going to labor. Labor as a people. Labor as brethren. Until a little one becomes a thousand. Until a small one becomes a strong nation. That which God has proposed, no demon will be able to disannul it. In this year, we will show principalities and powers that they are not in control. For Jesus said, the prince of this world came and he found nothing. He wanted to orchestrate an activity. He wanted to cast a die. But there was nothing, no raw material for him to work with. He had to postpone his visitation. Nothing was found. There is a life of a warrior. That makes you immune to the visitations of Satan. And I believe that the least among our numbers will become as strong as David in the name of Jesus Christ. A watchman needs to be able to interpret the meaning of the rise of kings. There was such a time that an Assyrian rose in our neighborhood with a roar. The reason was because God wanted to punish us for our disobedience. But we have since begged for mercy. 
and pleaded, laying hold of the horns of the altar. Any king that rises among a people is pointing to something. His rise is a sign. And the sons of the prophets must know the interpretation. They must know why such a man rose among them. The rise of prophets in a generation is also a sign. Luke chapter 7 from verse 11 to 16. Luke 7. 11 to 16. Technical people, help me. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Naim. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came nigh unto the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother. And she was a widow, and much people of the city were with her. Jesus came with many disciples, and much people of the city were with the widow woman. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bearer. And there that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. No, he, he didn't just rise. The gist, he was gisting before he died. He just sat up and he continued. Where did I stop? Oh. <laughs> and he was delivered to his mother. Next verse. And there came a fear on all. And they glorified for God, saying, What? A great prophet is risen among us. And God has what? The sign that Jesus did was an indication that God has visited us. So when a prophet rises among the people, we should read the interpretation of his rising. A great prophet has risen up among us. God has visited his people. Watch men have details. Details that canal people can never research into. They know the foundation of things. And because of this knowledge, they, have, they can throw their weight around when they come to the trading floor of intercession. The challenge now is Psalms 74 verse 9. That's the challenge. In view of the above. The psalmist says, we see not our signs. That is the state of the average believer. He doesn't see his signs. He's blind to his signs. He's blind to the move of God. Is blind to the things that he needs to see that will give him an insight into the fact that God has begun to act already. Before the Holy Ghost came down on the day of Pentecost, God made noise first. And the Bible says that there was a sound like a rushing mighty wind. Before the rain came in the days of Elijah, he heard the sound. There was a sound that God made. It was the sound of an abundance of rain. That sound preceded the physical rain. But that sound was not audible. It was littered on the floor of the spirit realm. And only them that have ears to hear could hear. So science can either be physical or spiritual. But a watchman must have what it takes to read them. Night. We want to overcome this scripture, the situation that this scripture is talking about, where we see not our signs. It's a state of darkness. This is what wearies an intercessor. When he doesn't have sight, doesn't have perception, he cannot read anything at all. He believes that his prayer is a futility. I've met many strong intercessors in this situation, and they are wicked. They are discouraged. But they were not trained to read the signs 
when you begin to shake the spirit realm with your prayers signs begin to pop out they begin to pop out and wise men can read them and they draw encouragement from the things that they see from the things that they perceive from the things that they understand you think your nothing has changed you lie you see not your signs can we pray today and say god deliver us from the blindness of our signs Oh, 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 this year God will move and we will move his hand. We will compel his hand to do wonders. But each and every member, each and every one of the sons of the prophets must know how to read signs in the spirit. I come menatia. Isko falai ketemo kombeni. I have seen many intercessors so frustrated, so frustrated because we see not our sign. Many there be that pray for Nigeria and they say they don't know what to pray again. That's how Satan frustrates the intercessor. When he cannot read the signs, his spirit becomes weary, his soul becomes familiar. us the grace to look upon the signs that are littered in the natural and in the spirit blindness is not allowed the Bible says that a man lack understanding, it is not good. It is not good for you to prosecute life without understanding. It is not good for you to contend without understanding. It is not good for you to mount up in a new year without understanding. For he given power to the faith. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. For even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men, they shall utterly fall. For they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings. They shall mount up with wings. They shall mount up with wings. They shall mount up with wings like the eagle. They shall walk and not fade. Who told you nothing is changing? You are rising. You are rising. The wind of the spirit is hanging beneath your wings. And you are beginning to mount up with wings. Oh God, open the way. Who told you nothing is changing? Who told you he may not be changing the situation, but he's changing you. He's changing you. He's changing you. There's a mountain. There's a mountain with wings. There's a mountain with wings like the eagle. Oh. He's changing you, changing your stature, changing your rank, changing your vocabulary in the spirit, changing your perception. He's bringing you into shape, making you fit, training your hands, training your capacity. You will mount up. You will mount up. You will mount up with wings. You will mount up with wings. Yeah! <laughs> I am changing. I am changing. I 
am being transformed from glory to glory. I have not, I am not where I used to be. Oh my God. Satan needs to try hard to get me discouraged now because I'm mounted up. There is a wind under my wings giving me capacity in the spirit. I am changing. I am transforming. Oh my God. Oh my God. us not to ignore the signs he's projecting at us. The realm is littered with signs. There are signs that reveal that there's an a pending attack. When I wake up from my sleep and I lose my peace in the morning, it means Satan has found a way to enter into my space. It means an evil thing is going to happen. The best I can do is to pray for it to be reduced. So that is a day that I will not go out. I will pray until that burden is lifted. I need to tell you from experience, sometimes it's better for you to even extinguish the body before it alights. But many people that they, 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 they be among us that do not know how to interpret signs. The devil, the, the Lord comes as far as giving you a body, a sign, a sense of danger, a fear, gives you. It's a sign of an emergency. Can we pray and say, Lord, 
caused me to understand the emotions of my spirit. Let me sense danger before it comes so that I will not walk into the very things that you are warning me about. Evil can be avoided. Darkness can be averted. Make me wise in the Holy Spirit. Make me wise. I can't hear your prayer. I can't hear your sound. Make me wise. Make me wise in the Spirit. Make me wise in the spirit. Make me wise in the spirit. Sometimes we sense death. Hold it. Satan looking for someone to kill. There's a desperation in the spirit. And that's why there must be no weakling in this house. The sons of the prophet. But the men of stature. The least among our numbers must be as strong as David. This has strange time. Your perception, your senses, your articulation in the spirit must all come alive. We will not walk headlong into danger. For in our hearts, the Lord shall give a sign. He shall give a sign. There will be no victim among us. He will give a sign. He will give a sign. From the heavens above to the earth beneath, He will give a sign. There was something that will catch your attention. Something that will throw you into action. Something that will reveal that it's time for me to stand upon my word. Set me upon my tower. I will hear what he will say to me. I will hear what he will say to me. I will hear what he will say to me. I will not be daft. I will not be without understanding. Take away my blindness. Give me light and I shall live. SMO come. You will not be without understanding. Without understanding, Aliaboko Kebalese Rabose Apatapa Iscopela Prescopela Minata Iscoratel Rantapapore Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Oh, how many of you have ever had a dream before you didn't know the interpretation? Are you like me? All right. It means it was the spirit of revelation that came to you what was lacking was the spirit of wisdom. It's a spirit of wisdom that gives you the interpretation of the puzzle that you receive. When God saw, when Paul saw that the 
Ephesian believers had a genuine conversion that was evidenced in their love for the saints. A prayer point activities. He knew they would suffer losses if the eyes of their understanding is not enlightened. So many believers have suffered losses, great losses, sometimes irreparable losses because they did not function by the spirit of wisdom. They did not function by the spirit of revelation. Someone came to marry you and you, you did not access the spirit of revelation. So he, he was not revealed to you by the witness of the Holy Ghost. What you saw was his bank job. What you saw was his biceps. What you saw was the size of his chest. That it was broad enough for you to put your head. Yeah. I can contain your head. <laughs> there was no revelation. Amalco Teli Cobris Avilamo. Hallelujah. We want to pray today and say, Lord, grant unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. That is to say that in the knowledge of the Lord, there are two impartations that every man needs. I'm talking about the school of the spirit that enlightens you and equips you with the knowing of revelation. The spirit of wisdom and what? Revelation. It is the spirit of revelation that opens the curtain and shows you what is hidden, what is concealed. But it's the spirit of wisdom that interprets the metaphors and gives you understanding so that the eyes of your understanding becomes what? Enlightened. So if the spirit of wisdom and revelation acts on your heart, the product will be the eyes of your understanding will be what? Now, this scripture shows us some things that you can never know except the eyes of your understanding is enlightened. It means the spirit of wisdom and revelation will have to act on your heart before you can know these things. The first of those things is the hope of your calling. And the hope of your calling is actually talking about what is contained in God's eternal purpose. It's far more vast than your own personal assignment. It is the jigsaw puzzle, the maze of God's prophetic program across generations. If you don't know that maze, you will not know where your own generation fits and the significance of your own unique life. You can't know that except the eyes of your understanding. Is what? Enlightened. Second thing that you cannot know is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us that believe according to the walking of his mighty power. The six Greek words for power were used in that verse of scripture. That is a scripture for power. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19. First word, Greek word for power is hopabolo. Second Greek word for power is megatheos. Third Greek word for power is dunamis. Fourth Greek word for power is energia. Fifth Greek word for power is kratos. Sixth Greek word for power is iskus. All of them are in one verse of scripture. When we talk about the gospel of power, that's when I'll come to this scripture. It's a long lecture. Oh, in the natural, you might wave and somebody falls. The meaning of that thing, you don't know the meaning in the natural. You will need to receive witness from God in the supernatural to know the interpretation of that. Because the kingdom we're talking about, it operates by power. It's part of the ingredients that constitute this king. That's one verse that encapsulates the six Greek words for power. He said you can never know that walking of the mighty strength of God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead that now is the operating system of your Christian life. You will never know it except the eyes of your understanding 
is a light. The spirit of wisdom and revelation, the knowledge of him must act on your heart. Then you can understand these things. These things are too high for your mind. That thing you can never know except spirit of wisdom and revelation. Is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. <laughs> that is the central bank of heaven. Have I taught that message here? The central bank of heaven. That's when you know the meaning of the Greek word called oikonomia. The central bank of heaven. Who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly realm. You will never know that until we show you what the central bank of heaven is. The budget for your life. There's a budget for your destiny. There's a budget for the purpose of God in Nigeria. There's a budget. It is in a certain currency that is stronger than the British pound. It's called riches in glory. Uh, we need to investigate it. Meanwhile, except the eyes of your understanding are enlightened. Many of you think God didn't plan for you before he showed, showed up. Meanwhile, before a year starts, God, the human beings set up budgets. They form the budget. Sometimes they borrow to fund it, as the case is in Nigeria. <laughs> Even though our budget implementation profile is like 15 percent but and all, all of the money is spent may the days of our visitation as a nation draw near <laughs> in the name of jesus god prepared a budget for your life it's just that the eyes of the understanding you see there are many things people are blind to that's why they live like beggars on the earth the days of blindness have been measured and they are over. These are such days when God opens the eyes of our understanding by giving unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of it. Your, you see, your days in, in, the, in the forest is over. There is a predetermined specific pathway that has been plotted for you. On that pathway, there's fulfillment. There's supply, there is grace, and life will be an adventure of glory. And that's the purpose of God for every one of us. Can we pray today and say, Lord, grant unto me in rich measure the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Can you pray today? The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit. This spirit cannot be exhausted. Can't be exhausted. Just like when you pray and you don't have a prayer point, you just came into God's presence and begin to speak in tongues. He will give you the prayer point. He cannot be exhausted. Do it for a hundred days. He will give you a hundred and one prayer point because his spirit cannot be exhausted. These are the days where we will walk in God. No one will be starved because God will make so much allocation. So much allocation. So much grace will be caused me to abound toward Him. There is a budget that sponsors your life. But except the eyes of your understanding is enlightened, you will not know. You will walk like a fugitive in the air. Take away the blindness. Take away the darkness. Grant us light. Grant us grace. 2022 will be a year of destiny. I will be like a prophecy guided me sign my potentials will be unleashed the grace of God upon my life will show limitations will have to give way because I will mount up with wings like eagles God will become my sufficiency I will mount up beyond the barricade beyond the blockade beyond the attacks of the devil 
and I will stand in the full stature of the grace of God for my life. I will not walk in the shadow because the eyes of my understanding will be enlightened. Prophecy. La prosketo kopelantua. Genia tobida. Iskape katole mantale. Jai kompele. Abasi kopreskupa lamba. Can you sense it? Even now the heavens are open. Can you sense it? Can you sense it? Because even now. Even now grace comes. Even now the door is open. Even now the Lord beckons upon you. Oh, lift up your hands, he says. And see. Lift up your hands and see. Oh, you thought you were abandoned. You thought you were forgotten. But I tell you the truth. Even now, lift up your hands. The grace of God so mightily abounds. Amo sale, ipo conte la macabela, arrebo si come ali, lambo rocosa mala, ya mama mama.